Hey everybody and welcome back to Dash Studio. In this episode we are going to start adding some walls to our floor plan. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting that notification icon, that really helps me out. And of course an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons, your names are going to be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of the video. So let's jump into this then, as you can uh, recall, in the last episode we made this really rough looking floor plan. and all the way out there and you can see that is there so I'm going to bring in back up my reference material which um, you saw in the last episode you don't really need to see it now you can kind of get the gist of what's happening at this point so what we need to do is we need to actually create a shape uh, which is going to be our outside wall but we also need to decide on the dimensions of that wall so what first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a really simple um, cube like so and I'm going to give the cube uh, eight subdivisions and the reason for that is that we can then add cutouts for windows and doors and such if we want to but I'm just going to leave it at one meter in diameter like so so if we zoom right in on this we're going to switch ourselves back to wire shaded mode so that we can see what's happening and bear in mind that this is one meter across which is obviously way too thick for a wall we need our walls to be maybe a tenth of that and we can change the orientation of that dependent on whereabouts our first wall is going to be now i'm going to set our first wall to be on the uh, this long wall here and before i do anything else i'm actually going to set the floor to be probably about there and then that one's going to be 750 and that just makes the lines line up with the floor lines the grids makes things a little bit easier to align if we want to so what i'm going to do with this cube now that i've got that selected i'm actually going to put the floor into unselectable now so that's that's fixed in place i can't select it it's fine so our wall what i want to do is i'm going to change the scale on the uh, x-axis and i'm going to put that to 10 percent like that and then that gives us our 100 mil thick wall and then we can move it into place like so and then we can rotate our camera and we can align that up but the first thing i want to do is i need to know how long this wall is so we've got one meter two meters three meters four meters and we can just count the big squares actually one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven Let's try that again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and a half. So this on the Z scale needs to be 11, 5, 11, 50. There we go. And now we can slide that along until it covers up that entire wall there. If we really want to make sure, as you can see, I've actually fluffed that up. So we actually need to change the set scale to 1200 and that gives us what we need perfect so along we go we set that up and then we can actually make sure that that is perfectly aligned so that's got to be minus 550 and this one has to be minus 552 by the looks of it there we go perfectly aligned along that scale but it's currently only one meter high most rooms are about two and a half to three meters high. We're in an imaginary world, so we can afford to give ourselves 300%, 300% high walls. And there you go. That is our first wall in place. Perfect. So it's really just a case now of replicating that over and over again to fill in the walls. And then once we've done that, we can start looking at turning some of these uh, faces into walls or doors or windows. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, next one. So we're going to create another one of these cubes like so. And I'm going to drag that up here. And this is going to fill in this bit here. So we need to change it. So now it's only going to be 10% along our Z scale. Along our X scale it can stay 1. And along our Y scale it's going to be 300 again. Perfect like that. And then we can just move that into place making sure that that is minus 500 and we can and because we know that we're at, at the to the nearest meter or the nearest 500 centimeters we can make sure that that is 
exactly where we need it to be. So on the Z scale, if we zoom in, you know, move that back there, we can see how close or far away we actually are from our yeah, so that looks like it's minus 1150. Boom. Bang on. Dead center. Perfect. Happy days. And we're just going to repeat that process again for this little ball here. We're going to do that one more time. And so we're going to make sure that this time we're back to being 10% on our X scale. We don't need to change the Y, the Z scale, so we're just going to change the Y scale to there. Drag it more or less into place. And we could add snapping to this if we wanted to. If we were to bring up our tool options, which we can do easily enough, tool settings. And we're going to chain, turn on uh, snapping, enable. And we can now set this to, I'm going to set this minus 100. Set this one to minus 450. And now when we move it, it will snap along those 500 mil lines perfectly so we don't have to mess around anymore with lining that up. Now the drawback of doing this method is that these internal corners are going to look kind of weird. So we do need to turn off snapping to just align these perfectly. So we need to make sure that this guy is actually perfectly lined up on that instead so that it doesn't show us this weird corner sort of right angle interior corner so we actually need to make sure that this is i'm going to say minus 455 and that just gives us that perfect alignment there and now we can turn snapping back on perfect so now back to our next wall. So we're going to create another primitive like that. And we're just going to say accept. Now this one is one, two, three, four, five, six meters across. So we're going to change its dimensions along the X axis to 600%. Z axis is going to be back down to 10%. And our Y axis is going to be 300% like that. And now because we've got snapping turned on. We can just move that into place and boom, that'll snap into place perfectly. And as you can see, I'm working on the external wall first, and then we can start putting the internal walls in afterwards. And it is a bit of a faff, I will give you that, but it's it's all part of the, uh, the fun and games. Now, if you want to make life easier when you're doing these cut-ins, Bearing in mind that nobody, and I mean nobody, is going to see these shapes uh, from the outside. So what we can actually do is we can delete that because this is just an internal cut. And what we can actually do is create a cube and select it. And we can just zoom out a little bit. We can move it into place like that. And then we can just go boom. Now we've got our internal wall, but we've reduced the number of polygons and thus the amount. I know this is a trivial amount of geometry real in real reality, but you know, for the sake of doing this, it's just saving that little bit is, is going to make a, a difference in the future. So we're going to do that again and accept and we're going to select our new cube, do ourselves out again. And now we can move this one into place there and change our Y dimension again to 300, like so. And again, and, and theoretically, there's no reason why you couldn't just stick to keeping all of these walls the right thickness. But if you have got a window um, here, it's going to be you're going to lose the illusion because you're going to see a one meter thick wall. So on the walls where there's likely to be windows and doors, you need those to be the correct depth, correct diameter. So yeah, it's good to do these for these little corner cuttings, but on the long walls, you want to keep those 10 mil thick, really, or 100 mil thick even. Okay, so next wall, we need to do one for this. And this is another wall that I believe doesn't have a window in it. This is like the uh, cutting for a shower or something, uh, or a cupboard. So we could just stick a cube in there without worrying about the uh, full dimension so we're going to select that there and because we know that there's not going to be an object in this place we can just go 200% on the z-axis snap that into place 
and then we can go 300% there, like so. And then from the inside, it just looks like a wall, but obviously we know different because we can see from above. So the next wall is going to be uh, the, the same thing again. And I believe now though, that there's gonna be a window here. So we don't want to, there might not be a window there actually. No, I think we're okay. So we can get away with doing the same thing again here. There's no window in this kind of corner. So we can do that. Now, again, we can we can use the same trick here. We can reduce the amount of geometry that we're using. So I could actually go that this is going to be uh, one, two, three, four, four hundred percent along the X scale. Snap this into place like so. And it's going to be 200% along the Z axis like that. And then we can snap that into place. And then as we know, 300% along there. And then that gives us our internal walls again. And we've just reduced the amount of geometry that we've had to use. Now this wall does have a window on it. So we need to make sure that we get this one right. So we're going to cancel that. Make sure we click on the right button. And we can move this one roughly into place. And we know that on the X axis, it needs to be 10%. We know that on this axis is gonna be one, two, three, four. So 400% on the Z scale and 300% along the Y scale. And we snap that into place. Perfect. And that's another internal wall done. Keeping an eye on your reference material is important here. Now in this little cut in here, there are no windows so again we can use minimal geometry on this one so i'm going to just give myself a little bit of cube for that wall make that 300 mil perfect and then we can just give ourselves a double cube here so we're going to go with that again and we know that this is 300 percent along the x-axis and 300% along the Y axis. And then see from above, make sure that we've snapped that into place there. That's fine, we could have gone with 200%, so I could reduce the uh, X scale to 200% and then just move this down again. It's just minimizing that, that size and space of geometry. And now this is where our 45 degree wall starts as a a cut in here which is correct but then it cuts down at 45 degrees so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a another cube not a null I'm going to slide this into place just here like so and I'm going to increase the increase the size to 300 percent there like that and then we now need to decide on our wall so again this is not a massive problem at, by any stretch of the imagination because we've got the ability to do everything absolutely perfectly so we can create our our wall like this and this is going to be the, the dimensions are going to be a little bit trickier but it doesn't have to be perfect so we're just going to change the dimension to 10 percent on that wall and i'm going to go with maybe one, two, three, four meters long. So we're gonna go 400% on the Z scale. And we're gonna go 300% on this scale. And if we do need to adjust these dimensions, we can easily do it. So we're gonna go on the Y rotate and we can just set that to be 45 degrees. And then when we slide this into place, we've got to remember that we're staying on the inside of these shapes here. And as you can see, I've actually messed up the dimension I actually need to go to 500% on the X scale there we go and then we can line that up so that it's where we want it to be and just make sure we're getting that comes out to that one and then we can just add length to it basically to make sure that these edges meet up and again turning off your snapping here can obviously help with that as well. So I'm going to go 600% and I'm going to turn off my snapping now. And then that will allow me to perfectly line up this corner with 
that corner, more or less. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. Pretty good, though. It looks pretty good. Happy days. So the next wall is going to be this one along here. And this time, because this is such a long wall, I'm going to actually add 16 divisions because it's a massive, massive wall. So we're going to change our X scan again to 10%. We're going to change this to about, I don't know, let's say 1500. Change our rotation to minus 45. Set it up that way. And then line it up over here. And as you can see, where I, where I did my cutout, there's a few extra bases there. And I actually need to go up another couple. So I'm going to say 1650%. And this is again where we can make any tweaks. So 300% on the Y axis. Hasn't got it perfect, but it does have to hide your mistakes from the previous step. As you can see, because it's 45 degrees, you're now perfectly aligned with that. But to minimize the amount of clipping and stuff that's happening, I'm just going to edge that to there just so they're slightly overlapping. Just in case I put a window here, you don't want to be able to see the overlap. And it's kind of the same here, but I'm not going to put a window um, along this wall. But we've made it big enough that if we decide we want to have a change of scenery, we can do. So the next wall is actually our back wall. This one's got a window in it that's mostly window, but we still need to create it. So this one's not at a 45 degree angle to the main floor plan. So we can just go create our cube. I'm actually going to delete that because it's got too many divisions. We don't need all of those extra divisions in this wall. Except on the Z axis, I must remember to turn on my snapping. So I'm just going to undo that now. Turn snapping on. Perfect. So I'm going to make it maybe come around. One, two, three, four hundred percent along the X scale. 10% on the Z scale and 300% along the Y scale like that. Slot it into place. There we go. And we've got the ability to chop out these vertices where we want to make a window. Absolutement. Now we can put our next wall on there. Again, same routine again. Hit accept. Slide it into place. That's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go with 900% along the X scale. And it's going to go 300% along the Y scale. And it's going to go 10% on the X scale. Let's lock that into place. And I've given myself a little bit of wiggle room just for, you know, a bit of margin for error along there. I could probably get away with just making that 800% if I'm being honest. And just slot that along one. There we go. So the last exterior wall that we need to add is this one. So we're just going to go with uh, that's again, it's not too long of a wall. So we don't need to add dimensions to that one. So we go 10% on our Z axis. We go with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have 700% on the X scale. 300% on the Y scale. And I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. No, let's try minus 45 on that. There we go. Perfect. And as you can see, we've got snapping on at the moment, which is good, but it means that we can perfectly align that there. So we need to go with another like 200% along the X scale. So happy days. Now we can line that up. And then when we go inside, we're looking from the interior. We've now got our exterior walls set up for this apartment. All right, guys. Well, thanks very much for watching the episode. In the next episode, we're going to be doing our interior walls and any steps up in the floor. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know what you think in the comments below, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves, guys. Bye-bye.